In January of this year, the government of the state of Maine did something the scientific world found to be strange. Right now, if we don't account for the acidity of the water we pump from the Damariscotta River, every single time we change the water in our larval tanks, it can and has cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars over the course of a hatchery season. Mook is one of the members of the state's task force on ocean acidification. They all agree that the root cause of the problem is higher carbon levels in the atmosphere, changing the chemistry in the ocean water. This is the first major instance of politicians in America recognizing that global climate change will negatively impact the people those politicians represent in recent history. The basic gist of ocean acidification is the fact that carbon dioxide dissolves in seawater and reacts with the water molecules to produce carbonic acid, which makes the seawater more acidic, and that acidity is making life harder for most of the shelled life in the ocean. So what is physically going on here? What is the physical process that is happening in the oceans to cause it to become more acidified? What is the science of ocean acidification? Hello, Internet, and welcome to the science of using sci-fi and the news to educate people on how science actually works here in the real world. There are many issues with the ocean right now. Their levels are rising, they're heating up and becoming more acidic, just to name a few of the problems. Today I will tackle the acid problem. And as always, I will cite my sources in the description. The state of Maine realizes this as an issue with their seafood industry and it will cost both the industry and the state taxpayer an increasing amount of money in losses and damage control compared to the cost of mitigation of the problem preemptively. So what is the science behind this problem? What is the science that, that the state of Maine will have to utilize to implement mitigation? There have been plenty of scientific reports which have come out to answer the question of the exact mechanism for carbon dioxide in the air making the water in the ocean more acidic, and it's more complicated than any of us could have guessed. Yes, it can be summed up as the fact that the pH of the ocean has decreased by 0.11, or alternatively, has increased its h concentration by 30% since before the Industrial Revolution, and that by the end of the century, it looks as if the number will jump to as much as 150% of the pre-Industrial Revolution quantities, and it is estimated that at least a third of the carbon dioxide we have pumped into the air through our newfound industrial muscle has seeped into the oceans to make this possible. Like most questions in science, the devil is in the details. We don't ha have all these details yet. And this is why we as scientists in general, and the state of Maine in particular in this question, need to work hard and diligently to figure out the answers in order to mitigate this problem. The process of dissolving anything into water in particular depends on the charge separation of the chemical being dissolved. This means that the molecule has at least one part of it which has a greater negative charge than the average charge of the molecule, while at least one different part of the molecule has a greater positive charge than the average charge of the molecule. These molecules can dissolve into water because, as most of you may know, water is a chemical with these partial charges as well. Let's look at carbon dioxide as an example here. The oxygen atoms on carbon dioxide are more electronegative than the carbon atom. This means that the nuclei of the oxygens attract electrons more strongly than the carbon atom does. This means that the electrons involved in the carbon-oxygen bonds are more attracted to the oxygens than they are to the carbon, but not strongly enough to break the bonds. It's similar to the fact that the typical strongman competitor can break a typical exercise belt just by pulling on it, but the average person would not be able to do so. This makes the oxygens on carbon dioxide experience negative charge, which is different than that of the average of the CO2 molecule which also makes the carbon experience a positive charge, which is equal but opposite to the charge on both of the oxygens combined. The positively charged hydrogens on the water attracts the negative oxygen atoms of the carbon dioxide, while the negatively charged oxygen of the water molecule is attracted to the positively charged carbon atom. After all, opposite charges do attract one another. This is how anything that can dissolve in water, including CO2, does its dissolving, through opposite charges attracting one another. So, the atmosphere comes into contact with the surface of the ocean, and the carbon dioxide in the air gets dissolved into the ocean. It can't be that much, right? After all, there's only 400 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere. 
That's 0.04% of the air. Well, think on this. The surface of the oceans around the world is nearly 362 million square kilometers, or 140 million square miles. That is 362 million square kilometers of ocean being in contact with air, which has 0.04% CO2. So 0.04% by volume multiplied by 362 million square kilometers is a significant amount of carbon dioxide being dumped into the ocean. Once that carbon dioxide is in the water, how does that turn the water acidic? I have dissolved many things into many other things, both in and out of the chemistry lab, and unless you're dissolving an acid or base, the act of dissolving does not affect the pH of the solution. And last I checked, CO2 isn't a really good base or acid. So what's going on here? The answer here is chemical reactions. There is a significant amount of the carbonate anion in the ocean, which helps in the chemical reaction between CO2 and H2O. The carbonate anion reacts with the water, taking a hydrogen with it, and the water is left as the hydroxide ion. This negatively charged ion binds itself to the positively charged carbon of CO2, which is turned into hydrogen carbonate, the anion of carbonic acid. In that carbonate anion mentioned earlier? By the act of taking that hydrogen, it is turned into the anion of carbonic acid. This is the mechanism for acidification of the ocean. So how does that affect the shellfish and the lobsters, which the vast majority of industry in the state of Maine are all too dependent? This has been studied plenty since the Industrial Revolution. It is by a process called calcification. We do not yet understand the biochemical mechanism for this process, but we do understand the basic chemistry of it. When the carbonate anion is in very low concentration in the water in the area around the species, the carbonate in these shells are diffused into the water. That means they seep from the shell into the lower concentration water. This happens any time there is a drastic concentration difference in molecules anywhere in nature. The higher concentration will always tend to disperse throughout the lower concentration. That's what is happening here. As carbon dioxide, water, and carbonate react to form two anions of carbonic acid, there is less carbonate in the water, and the faster the shells release carbonate into the ocean. This is the mechanism we know for how the shelled sea creatures are being affected by CO2 emissions. The more CO2 in the air, the faster it is dissolved into the ocean. The more CO2 dissolved into the water, the faster the carbonate will react away. The less carbonate which is found in these areas, the faster the dispersion rate from their shells into the open ocean. The faster the rate of reaction, the more vulnerable these species are to their predators. The more vulnerable they are to predators, the more of them uh, get killed before the seafood industry of the state of Maine gets their fishermen out to catch these creatures for industry. What's my suggestion to the state of Maine, then? Figure out a means of reversing the reaction, reducing the carbonate ion, while pumping the carbon dioxide out of the ocean, while capturing that CO2 for other uses. Who would have imagined that pumping CO2 into the air would be a viable option? Well, things just keep on getting heavier and heavier on this channel, doesn't it? Well, join me next time when I will be talking about the following. But it isn't until we reached human beings at the top of the animal chain that we finally see a species use more of its cerebral capacity. So subscribe to stay informed. Don't forget to like, favorite, and share this video. Follow me on social media, links in the description, and as always, until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and keep improving the world around you.